Korea announcing it test fired a ballistic missile capable of striking the U.S. territory of Guam. And that's significant because thousands of American troops are based in Guam. According to the flight path, it's Pyongyang's most significant weapons launch in years. North Korea has been on a firing spree of late. This was the seventh launch just this month. There's growing concern that North Korea might do something even more provocative in the near future, like a nuclear test or a long-range missile test, one that might pose a direct threat to the U.S. mainland. A senior White House administration official says, tells NBC News that the U.S. does not fully understand why Pyongyang is doing this now. NBC News contributor Victor Cha is with us, former director for Asian Affairs at the National Security Council. Victor, more tests than like all of last year, already this year. What's changed? So I think there are a couple of things. The first is that they signaled they were going to do this earlier this month, that they were going to break the self-imposed missile testing moratorium, uh, the 2018 summit that the North Korean leader had with Donald Trump. Why are they doing this? Part of it, I think, is that they're kind of impatient with the Biden administration. There's been no real effort at lifting sanctions, which is what the North Koreans want. Uh, there's also South Korean presidential elections coming up um, in early March. Uh, and I, so I think in both cases, they're trying to put more pressure on the United States and South Korea to make this the number one issue for both of them coming out of the South Korean elections. And, and Victor, what about this? The White House just nominated Philip Goldberg to be ambassador to South Korea. Significant because he's a former coordinator for U.N. sanctions on North Korea. Provocative move? Um, I don't know if it's provocative. I know Phil Goldberg. I think he's a tremendous diplomat and knows the issues very well. Um, I think that it's really, a it's really a reaction to what they thought the incumbent South Korean government could deliver um, in terms of the Biden administration and an early lifting of sanctions, and that has not happened. The North Korean economy is in desperate shape now because of COVID. They've locked down the border now for over two years. So they're not getting what they want. And so they're now, you know, shaking up the table to try to make themselves the front burner issue for both Biden and the new South Korean president. Which is part of a pattern as far back as I can remember. Whenever they want to get noticed, they start firing things off and, and, and you know, unsettling the region and getting the South all upset. But, but in, in this particular case, you, you get to a road too far if you start testing nuclear capable, don't you? Yeah, I mean, I think that's right. They, you know, they have done nuclear tests before. I mean, what's different about the testing that we've seen, as you mentioned earlier, is uh, the technology that they're testing. This last IRBM they tested, as you said, can reach Guam. Uh, but it was also launched from a mobile platform, which right. means that it's much harder for the United States or Japan or others to preempt that capability should they actually try to threaten the U.S. homeland. Right, IRBM, in intermediate range uh, ballistic missile. But if they start testing something that could reach, say, our West Coast, are, are we in a whole new place? Well, I think we certainly are, are headed in that direction technologically. That's clearly what they want to do. And they've tested some prototypes already in 2017. Politically, it becomes a whole different issue when the North Koreans are testing successfully missiles that they can say we could reach all the all of the United States. I think politically that's a much more difficult issue for the uh, for the Biden administration because it's not something they can shell. I mean, the issue is yeah. kind of on the shelf right now and they won't be able to do that if they're threatening to hit Texas or New York or California. Yeah, that would make it harder. Victor Cha, thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.